So, um, uh, so th th this uh, lecture is devoted to th the proof of uh, the main theorem of the last uh, lecture, so namely um, the theorem is saying that um, two co-products are uh, related. And so uh, I will recall the main actors and then we will go into the proof. So, um, uh, main actors. So we start uh, with a free D algebra. So here we call it F2. So this is a free D algebra over generators uh, x0, x1, which are also called E0 and minus E1. So convention X0, X1 is from Racine's paper, and convention E0, E1 is from uh, the line uh, Perasoma and so on. So, okay. Minus. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this uh, gives rise to uh, this algebra W left the RAM, uh, which is C plus UF2 E1. UF2 times E1. Uh, okay, we have also the free group. Uh, free group. F2 with generator capital X0, capital X1, and it gives rise to uh, W left BT, which is C, uh, direct sum CF2 uh, times uh, X1 minus 1. Okay, so these are, if you want, the discrete algebras, and we can complete them. So uh, both give rise to completions, W Durham hat, which is um, C, plus uf2 uh, hat, hat this means uh, com degree completion e1, and w left bt hat, which is c plus uh, cf2 x1 minus 1, so the completion inside uh, cf2 hat. And uh, this is uh, completion inside uh, uf2 hat. So these are uh, complete and Hausdorff algebra. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so the good products. Uh, delta star. So we have a good product um, which is uh, from the RAM to the RAM square. Which is a commutative and co-associative co-product, and it's given by explicit formula, and we also have this delta sharp from W left uh, bt to W left bt square. So it's given by explicit formula that we have. <coughs> Here, I have to mention one, th one fact that one has between uh, these two algebras some isomorphism, isomu, where mu here is a in C cross, and isomu is given by uh, x0 goes to x mu uh, e0, x1 goes to x mu e1. <coughs> okay. And it restricts to an isomorphism here. Which is also dilated isomu. So here, uh, it's an algebra isomorphism, and uh, it is something not canonical. It's an ingredient of something canonical. Uh, okay. The third <coughs> ingredient is uh, so we have this uh, groups. So X F two hat. Uh, together with uh, this limited uh, <coughs> magnus uh, product, there is a lap theta, which means uh, multiplication by some gamma, uh, ga gamma function, and uh, it is going into the group uh, uf2 hat 
uh, invertible, so we take the inverses here, so we take the invertible elements in UF through hat, but uh, this we equip with the same product, which is, uh, so, uh, twisted magnets, and this is now acting on W left the run, so this is a vector space, C vector space, Uh, so it is a uh, vector space action. So in fact, it's not an algebra action; it's just a uh, vector space action. So this is just a module and not an algebra. So this is an algebra, but viewed as a uh, module over this is just a vector space. Yeah. And uh, here H, the notation is that this is acting uh, by S Y uh, H S Y H. Double right? W. Yeah. Okay, so these are the main actors. And the theorem says that. What is the subscript? Is that an L? Here. Left. 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 Uh, sorry, yeah, this is left. Just drop it? Hmm? If, if we just write W, is it correct or is that something else? Um, the previous yeah, part it, it will, it will have, the right part will appear just once in the talk, so you can drop it if you want. So, okay. So, left here means that uh, uh, the main algebra is at the left. And there is a right version which is E1, uh, E2, if you want. No, no. I was absent in the Left. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so just. Uh, okay. So. Uh, 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 from the no, it's big, it, it's the, the, the right thing is that the rightmost is E1. Ah, right rightmost is E1. The rightmost is E1. Okay. Okay, so uh, the theorem is that for any mu uh, in C uh, cross, for any G in G uh, MR mu, let's see. Uh, then uh, delta sharp hat is equal to what Foucault calls so this delta dt uh, star, and I will give. So uh, and this delta dt star is the common value of the right hand side uh, for all these elements. And what is this right hand side? This is uh, S y theta of g composed with i to mu. Okay, the square of inverse. <coughs> so, um, so it's an equality in Rom algebra from W uh, BT left. Okay, and what we know, okay, so this is the main result we want to prove, okay, and what is known due to stabilizer result <coughs> is that uh, the right hand side. Uh, does not depend on the pair uh, mu five or mu. <coughs> the right hand side here. So I thought that was the statement. Hmm? I thought that's what the theorem said that it doesn't depend. No, the uh, the, uh, so the theorem two I think uh, said that this does not depend. Theorem three said that uh, this common value of all these things is equal to this explicit delta sharp. Ah. 
Okay? So that's one thing. So there are two, 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 two steps in uh, Forge lectures. The first thing is uh, from delta star and from um, the unknown minimum to be cut a uh, mysterious new coproduct. And uh, so we, we know from stabilizer results that this is just uh, independent on, on, uh, on the PRG uh, mu. So uh, we want to compute it. But, uh, okay, this result that of independence is just not explicit and it's still mysterious what this common value is. And now the result is that this common value is this delta sharp. Okay. okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm not sure because it's really a story of going from Betty to Doran and this result, I don't know, maybe I, I should study it, so I cannot really say because I should study this result. Thank you. So, okay, and the corollary to this re uh, result, as Rocho said, so is that we have uh, uh, new viewpoint on DMR mu also. So uh, we can say that DMR mu is a set of G uh, in this uh, TM algebra, uh, TM group, uh, such that uh, if you want, uh, SY theta of G square inverse uh, delta hat SY theta of G is equal to this iso mu square delta sharp iso mu inverse. So here you, you, you must think that this is the this, this some action of this group Tn uh, on uh, the element delta star. So it's an equality in uh, home. Uh, from um, uh, W left the RAM to W left the RAM square. So here, if you want, you have uh, this home from W to W square. Uh, here, you have a particular point delta star. And here, you have another point in this very space, which is, um, uh, or let's say, vector to be vector. Uh, this uh, another point which is this iso mu square delta star iso mu inverse. Yeah? So you have two points there, and the set of the DMR mu is a set of uh, elements taking one to the other. So from this, it's clear that it's, it's a torsor, and uh, that the stabilizer, uh, stabi uh, the acting group is a stabilizer of one point here. This will be the stabilizer on the Doran side and the stabilizer on the Betty side. Will be the, st uh, the stabilizer, uh, the, the group on the Betty side is the stabilizer on the other point. Okay. So that's the, the main, so the, 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 this uh, theorem you want provides you with a uh, clear description of what should be the Betty uh, counterpart of uh, GMR. So, the GMR. Okay. so now let's uh, go into the proof of the theorem. So there are going to be several ingredients. So here let me list these ingredients. So, uh, ingredients. So, the first one is we already know that the right hand side does not depend on the pair mu phi, so we will uh, compute, uh, so we reduce the proof of the theorem for mu phi equals the KZ associator. So, reduce. Uh, and so, and because we know that uh, we know that phi kz belongs to DMR to pi, so this was already in Racine. In fact, the second uh, step is 
to use the fact that, in fact, this pair is also an associator. So 2 pi i phi k z is an associator. And therefore, it connects uh, braid groups with their infinitesimal versions, with infinitesimal braid d algebras. And this is so called the Greenfeld Barnatan theory. are in defense so it's made very explicit in Barnatan. Okay. <coughs> the third point is to show that uh, in fact one can connect delta star with infinitesimal braid uh, Lie algebra. And so uh, this is based on an idea which is present in the paper of the Lin and Terrasoma. There is a, a 2005 triplet. Okay. And uh, number four is that one can, in the same way, uh, analogous to three, connect delta sharp with braid groups. So putting all these things together, there is a work of putting everything together and uh, getting a uh, theorem three. Okay. So basically, the idea is as follows. So first of all, uh, we reduce to this uh, to this uh, guy, which is an associator. So we know that associators have good. Uh, properties of connecting braid groups and infinitesimal braid algebras, so it's like so called this uh, formality isomorphisms. Um, okay, and then delta star itself expresses it uh, can be expressed in terms of infinitesimal braid algebra. So, this is a very uh, new idea, that's the main new idea uh, from all this work. And uh, it's a diagram which is uh, very mysterious. It's uh, in this preprint of the Linter Soma, which uh, we will discuss from there. So, then uh, after this, the, there is a work to do which is analog, uh, analog of the Linter Soma, which is connecting this delta sharp with uh, this brain group. So, now if you want, uh, delta, the, the, the picture is like, like, like that. So, delta star is connected to infinitesimal. Braid uh, the algebra. Uh, delta sharp is connected with braid groups. And the associator phi kz relates them, and therefore you get a relation uh, between them to phi kz. Roughly the, the, the structure of the, the, of the ID. Yeah? So uh, this is point 2 if you want. This is point 3. And, uh, and this is it. So the path we will follow, so we will go from uh, 3, so uh, we, will, we will first show this. Three, yeah. the top line is three. 3 and 4. The top line is 3 and the bottom line is 4. Oh, sorry, 3 and 4. The right arrow is 2. So, uh, so the path we'll follow, we'll first read this one, and then uh, this one, and this one, and this one, yeah? Any questions? Oh.
Ah, uh, so, uh, it's, but uh, it's um, so uh, it's a sphere break group, if you want, of uh, four strands and four and five strands. So the the best we point to say is it's a um, modular group. So this gamma zero five. So so we'll see. So we try now to connect delta star with infinitesimal grain the adjacent. So we start with some uh, some groups. So there is a group uh, which we call Pn star, where n is greater than 4. So this is also called gamma 0 n. So this is a pi 1 of m0 n, if you want. And it's called mapping class group of type 0 n. Of type 0 n. So uh, surface of genus 0 n with n mark points. So that's one group. So what do we know of this group? Uh, this group is the same as uh, k a minus one moderate center, and k n minus one is the Artin grade group, the group of uh, a minus one uh, strands on the plane. Pure Pure yeah. Okay, and also, so uh, it has a property, uh, just I say it for table terminology, that uh, there exists also a group uh, Pn, uh, which is the uh, pure grade group. Pn star cross cyclic groups, uh, cyclic groups uh, in C2, the so group is two elements. Okay. So now uh, Pn star has a descending uh, series, so you have commutators. And then the graded, uh, associated graded object is a Z the algebra and uh, by definition what you call the infinitesimal braid uh, algebra of order n it's a Z the algebra C2 C2 yeah it's a discrete product not a product discrete product not mm -hmm. a physical product mm -hmm. and uh, by definition so we said Pn is by definition this uh, group of Pn star transformed with C. So it is a graded the adjunct. Okay. Um, so it's with, we call it infinitesimal. Uh, sphere uh, braid uh, the Why sphere? Because uh, if you do this uh, and then you turn them with C, C2 gets killed in fact because it's torture. Okay. Uh, so we can give a presentation for Pn, but before this, I want to give some elements. First, in capital Pn star. So uh, we have elements for I, uh, elements in k i minus one. So uh, we have this i and j, so strands, 
and this is called the element xij so this depends on elements a pair of elements i and j which is strictly smaller i is strictly smaller than j and the interval from 1 to n And also an element which we call xin, which is this element. So i here is in 1 n minus 1, and this belongs also to k n minus 1. Okay. So uh, what you can do? is you can say that x i j uh, itself so it belongs so its class belongs to gre 1 of uh, p n star okay which maps to some element which is called e i j in uh, p uh, n star so this defines for you elements e i j in p n star You define the x i n twice, haven't you? No, because it's uh, minus one, sorry. Ah, n minus one. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so here the dots are uh, to n minus one, I'm sorry, and here from one to n minus one. So you have this element here, and uh, um, Uh, so yeah, then you can give a presentation of uh, Pn uh, proposition. So. That uh, generators, so Pn is presented by generators uh, Eij uh, for this, uh, we say that Ij So, and okay, and also you said that EII equals zero and EJI equals EIJ. <coughs> so, once you did do this, so you, the presentation is this for the uh, generators are EIJ, where IJ are in the interval 1 uh, uh, N, and relations EII equals zero, sum uh, for any I, the sum over J of Eij equals zero, and then for any four different Ijkl, uh, Eij commutator Ikl equals zero. Okay, so this is the general condition of Pn. So, particular case, uh, P4 <coughs> So the smallest interesting case for us, for n equals 4, then you have an isomorphism of uh, between uh, f2 is isomorphic with p4, and the uh, isomorphism takes here uh, e0 and e1. So here you have e1 4 equals e2 3, and here uh, you have e. 1, 2 equal e3, 4. So this will be the image of e0, this will be the image of e1. So here you have isomorphisms. So this is it. So you have uh, Lie algebra. Now you also have morphisms between this Lie algebra. Morphisms so the Lie algebras were interested are only P4 and P5 
and so morphism related them. So in fact, you have a bunch of morphisms from uh, Pn to Pn minus 1, which means corresponds to forgetting some strand. So, and uh, they have uh, associated graded form counterpart, and uh, you define this way, so uh, pre i underline for i in one file, it's a morphism from p5 star to p4 star, uh, corresponds to forgetting uh, the strand i. Okay. And uh, it's uh, we call pre i, it's the of this uh, morphism, times c. So it's a morphism from p5 to p4. So it is given by explicit formula. So the, f the fact is that each e i something is mapped to zero. Uh, for j k uh, different from i and from phi, e uh, j k map to e j k, and this is sufficient if i is different from phi. This is a definition if i is different from phi, and if i equals phi, you need to say also. Uh, uh, so, so if um, so, so it's, it's sufficient if i equals five, but if i is different from five, you have to say that e five j is mapped to e i j. So these are the algebra morphisms. Algebra is completely symmetric. Yeah. And then why have you got a condition i not equal to phi then? Mm. Or it should be completely symmetric as well. The projection map is symmetric in the reaction map. The projection map? Here you've got the different conditions. Why is it completely Ah! Uh, well, you've got the condition i not equal to phi. Even though your presentation is yeah, completely it's symmetric. And here you've got a. No, it's just one side at infinity. So, okay, let, let's say it this way. So, the, the thing, so what you want to do, okay, let, let me, so what you want to do is you say that Eij is mapped to zero, you're right, and e, uh, Kl, where Kl are all different from A, should be mapped to E some Fi of K, comma Fi of L. And Fi is some bijection between uh, 1n, or uh, zero, uh, 1n minus i, because you want to remove this i, with 1 and minus 1. Okay, and ah. such a bijection... But then you agree this... Right, okay, but then the second form is also wrong, isn't it? Or is it correct? No, it's correct. No, only if, if i is 2, then e13 would go to e12, because you've renumbered. You no, renumbered no, 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 okay. no, okay. In principle, okay, but it's not the first no, uh, because the thing is you need some uh, some bijection here, yeah? yeah? So the general thing is, is this, and here this provides you with some bijection. Yeah. I think another way is, think of the generators as being partitions of n into 2 and n minus 2. Yeah. yeah. So that's why 4 is exceptional, because... You know, yeah. I'm symmetric in, in the two. No, the, <coughs> the, the thing is that you need a bijection, but five, okay, the thing is that five is the only index here which is not present here. Let's say this way. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to do very combinatorially, so in fact, uh, so, so, so if you want to make this isomorphism ex explicit, then you, get, you, get, you have a problem at that point, so you have to say. Okay. But in, in general, the, the thing is you need to, the, 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 this is an arbitrary choice. Here of of, the, of such base directions in fact. Okay. okay. So we have the algebra morphism. These are group morphisms. And then we need also a section of profile, and this section will be called L. So L equals a section And so it's a morphism from P4 
to P5, which is going uh, to sum uh, E12 and E23 to E12 and E23. Okay, so it's also a real general morphism. Okay. Then we do the following. Uh, we, uh, uh, so Pro5, it's a morphism as we said from uh, P5 to P4. And uh, it's a real algebra morphism, so it's a, also a morphism between the universal evolving algebra. And what we are doing is we are taking the kernel of this map. And this kernel, so it's an idea in U of P5, and we call it following the uh, interosoma J of P5. So it is a two sided idea. In U of P5. Okay, and what you can prove is that as a, a left module over U of P5, it is free. With basis. So you can say E15, comma E25, comma E35. Okay. Now uh, there is a fact that uh, if you have a ring R and J is um, ideal in this ring, or it's uh, ideal. and that J is a free, a free uh, left module over R, over some basis. Uh, then you get an algebra morphism from R to MK of R by the following rule, so you are taking some element uh, uh, small r here into the uh, rij, the matrix rij for ij in one n, where you have ei r equals sum over j of rij times ej. So you use the fact that, and so, so you use the fact that j decomposes in this way to, def to uniquely define uh, K upper of elements Rij here, where J goes from 1 to K. Uh, so this gives you an algebra morphism. Yeah. Just the matrix with this map. Yeah. In space. Exactly, yes. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, this fact plus this fact gives us an algebra morphism A from U of P5 to M3 of U of P5. Uh, then the main result of this, uh, so the connecting delta star uh, with all this topological material <laughs>
Okay, so, in fact, yeah, so, so maybe yes, some object coming up from this will correspond to your remark. So, um, then a proposition here. So, there is a commuting diagram. So, you start with uh, U P4. So, by lift, by this lift L, you go to U P5. Uh, and then, you have this morphism A going to M3 of U P5. And then you are doing so um, M3 of the product of two uh, of two morphisms pro one cross pro two. So this maps you to M3 of U P4 square. Okay. Uh, and then also you do a strange thing is you are uh, you have matrices and so you left and right multiply uh, these matrices by some uh, row and column matrix, so E1, F1, 0, you, multi you, put, you plug in here, here your matrix, and then you also multiply by 1, minus 1, 0. So E1 is, um, so here there is some notation, so E1 is, uh, so uh, this uh, E1 times 1, which belongs to U F2 square, so U F2 is the same as U P5. Huh? So, and so this is going to U P4 square. And F1 is uh, 1 times E1 is in the same place. So it's a uh, notation from the internal summa. Okay, uh, this thing is the same as U F2 square, as we said. Good. And here, the thing is that um, uh, this thing also is isomorphic to U of U of two, and so here we have. So here, let me mark the the maps which are not algebra morphism. So this is not an algebra morphism. And here we also have a map uh, into W uh, left the run. Uh, which is right multiplication by E1. And this is also not an algebra morphism. Okay. Good. So, um, inside this, we have a subalgebra which we call W right the RAM square. So, W right the RAM is the right quarter part of W the RAM. So, it's uh, E1. Uh, C plus E1 times uh, U F2. Okay. And you have uh, here an isomorphism between this thing, which is called Ed E1, and W left the RAM. So, and Ed E1 is taking some element A E1, it's taking it to E1 times A. So you have an E1 square. Okay, and here the point is that you have delta star. So this diagram commutes. So on this side you just have algebra morphisms until here and also here. And the funny thing is that uh, these two algebra morphisms are related by non-algebra morphisms, so vector space morphisms. So this is, uh, roughly speaking, the, the algebraic counterpart of the categorical construction of the linear soma, as we understood it. So they are using um, some kind of pairs and uh, uh, diagrams, and, um, and they have a clever computation which boils up to this. So now we are in a position to, so we, we achieved our task uh, number three, which is connecting delta star uh, here. With a 
infinitesimal Brady algebra. Okay. So now we will try to quickly uh, do the same uh, for a delta sharp and then explain the connection. Connecting some uh, delta uh, sharp with break group. So most of the material is uh, already on the board. So uh, you have uh, already these groups uh, P five stars, for I these morphisms to P uh, from P five star to P four star. Okay. Uh, ah, and uh, so we need the analog of the lift, so lift L is going to uh, from P4 star to P5 star, and it's uh, given by the same formula, just replaced by X, so X12, X23 goes to uh, X12, X23. It's a section, it's a, uh, yeah. So, um, uh, what else? So yeah, also there is an isomorphism of uh, P4 star with F2, uh, taking x0, x1 uh, to, uh, I think, uh, sorry. I think the same things, so x12 and x23. Okay. have the map, uh, so again, so you have a pre 5 underline, which is a morphism from C P5 star to C P4 star. Take its kernel, uh, you call it a J of pre 5 and it's also, so it's, it's again uh, an ideal, and it's again uh, free as a uh, left C P5 star module, so it's a free left C P5 star module with basis over X15 uh, minus 1, X25 minus 1, and X35 minus 1. And together with the uh, lemma that we had before, we get a map, a morphism A underline, going from uh, C P5 star to M3 of C P5 star. And all this fits together in a Betty analog of this diagram. Of uh, this is the round diagram of previous layers. So uh, here, let me put maybe, um, uh, let me just show the correction so we will save time. So here, we should put the, put, we put the proportions in blue. So this is going to be C, P5, uh, P4 star. Okay. This is C, P5 star, so same structure exactly. Q, 
here you have this L underline, A underline. This M3 is M3 of CP5 star. So at each place you have to replace uh, so things by the group analogs and uh, to underline the things. So I think it's very easy. So. Uh, here, the thing should be replaced by some other element. Uh, so uh, here, the, other, the element will be the following. You have to put here x1 minus 1, 1 minus uh, y1, 0. You plug in your matrix, and then you put uh, y1 minus 1, 0. So where uh, here you have to specify where are these elements. So uh, in fact, you are saying that um, uh, x1 is uh, element x1, comma 1, which is in F2 square, which is uh, inside the group algebra of CF2 square. And y1 is the element 1, comma x1 in the same place. <coughs> okay. Uh, okay, so here you replace by CP4, uh, CP4 star square. Again, uh, CF2 square. Here, W, uh, you have to put W right uh, Betty. And you have to say what this is. So, W right Betty. This is C, so it's direct sum. Uh, so, if you put here X1 minus 1 uh, CF2. Okay? Uh, w right the RAM, uh, W left Betty, as you remember, this is C plus CF2 x1 minus 1. The there is an isomorphism here called add of x1 minus 1, which works just the same way um, as it did for add of v1. So you have to put your add of x1 minus 1. Here you put Betty, here you put Sharp, here uh, you put Betty, and here you put uh, CF2. And here you put uh, x1 minus 1. So uh, in blue, here you have the uh, Betty diagram. So now uh, we did our test number 4. And now we want also to um, explain. Um, the role played by associators and how associators are going to connect the two sides of the picture. One, so, uh, what one knows uh, from uh, Brunfeld Barnatan theory is that uh, if you have a C a Pn star, so it's a bunch of algebras, they are connected. Uh, so, this collection, so the, you have various morphisms, we have seen some of them, and you have this U of Pn, so you may copy them. And the thing is that you have a collection of isomorphisms between these completions, so-called formality isomorphisms, and uh, they can be made algebraic, they can exist for any associator. So here we just look at them for the KZ associator. So we call them underline A, 2 pi i, uh, K, uh, high KZ. And uh, index N to indicate uh, the, the, the rank of the brain. So this collection of morphisms, they have properties, they have good pro uh, categorical properties with respect to the morphisms between the various PNs. So they have good, good uh, properties with respect to morphisms, natural morphisms. The PN star and uh, the 
Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, also, one of them you can identify with what we with what we know. So, so if you specialize to a degree form, uh, then you so as we have seen, this is CF two, and this is UF two. And uh, here you put A phi kz, which is a morphism that is going to define two times iso to pi i. So iso we have seen, this is this non-canonical piece of the canonical thing. So here this is a canonical thing, and this iso mu is the, the, the piece we have seen which was not canonical. And I phi kz, so ag in general, is an automorphism of uf2. Which takes x0 to g, x0 g inverse, and x1 to x1. Okay. okay. So we identify this A4 with something known. And uh, the next thing is uh, we have some uh, various compatibilities. So in fact, uh, this uh, A5 is going to connect the white diagram with the blue diagram. So compatibility. Between Betty and the RAM. So let me draw some diagrams. First of all, uh, L, for example, is um, connected on the nose. So so if, if, if this diagram, if every morphism in this diagram is geometric, then automatically the different form associated will. Yeah. We'll That's exactly it. Yeah. So the thing is that you have to do it technically, and at some point you have some. Uh, it's not exactly commute because you have to choose bases in your in your um, in your ideals and so on. So uh, you have uh, everything will commute, but up to some conjugations, you have to take care of everything, and that's where gamma functions will appear actually. <laughs> so and then you have this. Uh, in fact, uh, C uh, P five star. You have the L here, uh, underline L, so the blue L, and this is L here. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, CF2. Uh, I'm sorry, so U, uh, P5 hat. Uh, so here you have, to, you have to put the A5 uh, to pi I phi kz, and here you have to put uh, this thing, so A phi kz. Composed with iso mu, with iso 2 pi. This is commute. Okay, very good. So, uh, also I can show you, uh, so you have to uh, check many diagrams. And as I said, some, some of them don't commute on the nose, so you have to also conjugate. So, so for example, the one with A. So, A is quite very non canonical because it involved. Uh, a choice of basis, that you are not, you are not sure that your two bases are going to match. And so here you have a CP5 star. Uh, so all these are completed, of course. So here, it doesn't quite commute, and uh, you also have to multiply here by some adjoint of P, and P here belongs to a GL3 of UP5. Okay? So uh, also another thing which does not quite correspond is the correspondence between this row and column vectors, which also matches with these elements. So here let me describe that part. So you have that uh, x1 minus 1, 0 maps through the map, uh, uh, th this map uh, a phi kz composed with iso 2 pi i squared. 
is going to map to, uh, so you have some element kappa. Uh, this, uh, so the image by pro one two, pro one two, pro two of this matrix P. So the element you want. And some a new element V. And V involves, so here just ga, uh, kappa is just some expression in phi, in the phi kz. But this is an expression in, uh, expression also in gamma sub phi. So here that, that's where the gamma function comes in. And the same goes for the uh, row matrix. So it's going to uh, go to some matrix, sorry. Uh, this one is uh, x1 minus 1, 1 minus 3. And this is going to go to the matrix you want. But then, uh, in fact, let's multiply by some element which also uses gamma functions. And uh, the same element, so kappa pro 1 cos pro 2 of p inverse. So, okay, so all this gives you, uh, so th that's the list of compatibilities. So, using all these compatibilities and using the fact that delta star and delta sharp are related to these diagrams, then you get um, a new diagram uh, relating delta star and delta sharp. So we have W left bt. So you see that uh, after all some gamma functions appear. And so there will be a trace of each here. Here you have delta sharp. Here you have iso 2 pi i. Here you have a phi kz. So here W left the RAM. So you have delta star. W left the RAM square. Here we have some adjoint action by the, the beta function. So phi kz of minus E1 minus F1 over gamma phi kz of minus E1 and gamma phi kz of minus F1. <coughs> and again, I go to pi i and uh, a phi kz squared. Okay, so here we are very, very close to, to uh, our wanted diagram. So let me uh, here, so what we get after uh, from associator, so uh, associator. So associator tells us the commutativity of the diagram. So let us connect it with the initial diagram. Uh, some work to do. And it's very, very quick. So, um, so let me draw the initial diagram. So what we had is W left bt. Delta sharp W left bt square. Iso to pi i. W left the RAM. We have this map Sy theta of uh, phi kz uh, mapping us to uh, W left the RAM. Okay. Again, here the same but square. And here we expect. Delta sharp. This is our diagram. Okay. So in fact, the first thing 
is that uh, we will decompose it as follows. So uh, you can show that uh, this SY so is the fact that uh, that uh, SY of some H, element H. So uh, it's an endomorphism of uh, this W left the run. So it is equal to uh, some A sub H. H sub H is just the same as the A sub um, that, uh, that A that was defined previously. So um, composed with right multiplication by pi y of h. So here, uh, one has to work to, uh, to prove that. Uh, once this is done, so here you can decompose <coughs> this s as a product of two things. Hmm? Yeah, mm -hmm. just so, um, so here you have w left the round square, w left the round. So here uh, you have this S, uh, theta of phi k z, <coughs> of A phi k z, theta of phi k z, and here the A square. And then uh, this is a right multiplication by phi y of theta of phi k z. But since phi k z is a general element, it's uh, primitive, it's group like for delta star. And therefore, and here you have the square of this right multiplication, so therefore you can write a delta star also here. Okay. Uh, the next thing is that uh, this theta of phi kz is some gamma phi kz of uh, minus e1 uh, inverse times phi kz. Okay. And so, therefore, uh, the A of this element is some conjugation. So, in fact, uh, A of some element, so it conjugates x0, but does not conjugate, conjugate uh, x1. But if you left multiply by some function of, uh, of E1, so it's like uh, it's, it were conjugating everything, in fact. So, it's like it's, so this is add of some gamma of minus E1 inverse, composed with I phi kz. So, here you can also decompose this like that. So here you have A phi kz, and see at adjoint action of some gamma of E1 uh, uh, here, yeah. and also here the decomposition. But then uh, you know the properties of delta star with respect to the, with respect to E1, and so here the thing is that you put can put here delta star, and it's also put here some correction which comes from the fact that E1 is uh, primitive, so you have to compute something, and here what you are putting is add of this very thing that you obtained before. Try to finish it. Okay. And uh, so you see that <laughs> here we get the diagram which was coming from associator. So in fact, if you want, we have the diagram coming from associator, and we uh, compose with, with various diagrams, and then in the end we get our big commutative diagram. Um, so if Ruscher has proof that the GRT, the graded Grotendieck Dick Teichmiller group, embeds into DMR. Yeah. Now that you have a Betty version of DMR, does yeah. GT embed into? Uh, excellent question. So it won't be for that. So we, yeah, it's it's a it's a thing. First, first of all, we need using the delta sharp to define the the, <laughs> the Betty version of DMR, and then yes, it will be the next question. To How different is your presentation from the link to the Thomas? Uh, well, uh, uh, the link to the are not exactly doing this, so they don't address the problem of explicitly uh, uh, computing the, the, the Betty analog of, of this delta star. So it's not a, a thing that they, they have looked very much into as far as, as, as they could read. So they're almost focused on the problem of. Showing this uh, of showing the, the inclusion of associators in, into DMR, and which apparently they obtained by, uh, by uh, uh, this uh, convolution techniques. So, but they are, they are not focused in this in, in this 
say that. I will say it. So I, I saw this one of um, for instance, M3, this M3, that this M3, 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 this M3,